Hi, and welcome to Gen Friends. Tonight we've got a really, really fun show for you. I'd like to introduce our panel. We've got Shelly Murphy, also known as the Family Tree Girl. Hi, Shelly. Hello. So glad to have you here with your new headset sounding yes. good. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. <laughs> and and although she's a normal member of our panel, our special guest tonight <laughs> is the archive lady herself, Melissa Barker. Hey. And she's going to talk to us about archiving. Hi, Melissa. Hello. Hello, Cheryl. How are you? I am good. I'm good. I'm so glad to have you. Um, I just want to kind of pick your brain for a little bit. But before we do that, I love the fact that you just kind of fell into this job. We would all <laughs> love to fall into a job of being an archivist. Had I known yes. earlier in my life there was such a thing, <laughs> you know, as being an archivist, I would have done so. I love touching and holding old things. So tell us about how you got um, involved. Uh, well, um, as you said, I kind of fell into it. Um, I wish I had found the archive profession 25 years ago, <laughs> but I actually found it when I was 42 years old. So <laughs> um, I was, um, I've been a genealogist for 28 years. I started in 1990 and in 2004, I became a professional genealogist. I was in the first, very, very first pro-gen group. And so that was in 2008, 2009. Um, and my life was going along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a phone call from our local librarian and she asked me if I would like to be part of a small group that had gotten permission from the county mayor's office to clean out the records vault and organize Ooh. it at the courthouse. Ooh. <laughs> and I will tell you, I almost said no because I had a lot on my plate and I was working. I had several clients I was working with and I thought, I just can't fit this in. But I said, yes. I said, well, I'll go check it out. It's for a day. We were just going to spend the day to do this. So six of us who were interested in history, the local history, uh, historical society and me uh, got together. We showed up at the courthouse and we opened the vault door. Now, I will tell you a small the story that <laughs> led to this. The story that led to this even doing this is a fantastic story. There's a local lady who is doing her genealogy research. Her grandfather had been murdered on the streets here in our county Ooh. in 1921. And she was actually writing a book. And so she had, could see, you're going to understand this. All of us will understand this. She <laughs> could see the court records on microfilm, but she wanted to touch and see the oh, actual yes. court records. Yes. <laughs> so Bless her heart. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so everybody kept saying, just go to the basement of the courthouse and look in the records vault. Because for years and years and years, the records vault was just unlocked and open to anybody to rummage through. And so she did. And when she opened the door, she couldn't get in. It was packed to the ceiling and to the door. She couldn't get in. So she was oh. the one who put the call out for us to get together to do this. So we showed up in August of 2010 to do this. We worked the first half of the day dragging boxes of records <laughs> out of this records vault. Uh -huh. We found old Christmas ornaments. We found um, we found ammunition that had not been shot or fired. Oh, it was gosh. just in a bag. <laughs> We, oh we found God. we found court evidence just Ooh. thrown in there, you know. We, it was it was a mess. Boxes torn open, records everywhere. <sighs> but so by lunch, we broke for lunch, went across the street to the court square uh, to a cafe and had lunch. And we started talking about it. He said, we know we really need an archive to preserve our county's records. And we were all, yeah, yeah, we do. You know how you do. And then they said, well, we need someone to head this up. And of course, everyone sat on their hands. Nobody said or raised their <laughs> hand or anything, including myself. And they all turned around and looked at me and they said, Melissa, you do genealogy research. You need to do this. And I was like, oh, no, I know nothing about being an archivist. And I didn't. I've worked in lots of archives, but I didn't know the first thing about being an archivist. For some reason, my mouth said yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the inner you. I yes, love it. yes. <laughs> and so, and so, we started this archive. Um, the legislative body um, voted uh, November the fifteenth, two thousand and ten, to establish an archive. Um, I can give lots of credit to the Tennessee State Library and Archives here in our state because they are huge about supporting county archives and oh, their nice. archivists. 
and they offer a program to county archivists called the Archives Institute. It's a three-year program where they train you to be an archivist for oh, the county. Wow. You know, they don't offer it to anyone who wants to be an archivist, only to their county archivists because they want to make sure they have archivists in place that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I went through the three year program from 40 when I was, like I said, 42 years old. I went back to school and um, became a certified archives manager. And so the rest is history, as they say. It's been almost nine years. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that our archives was formed because of a murder that happened in 1921. <laughs> I love oh, it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, that's wonderful. That just shows you just never know, you know, your life can take many different directions. <laughs> so be open to anything that might come along. I love that. Yeah. But it's, it's actually, I, I don't think I've ever, other than my family, I don't think I've loved doing or having anything in my life more than being an archivist. And, you know, and then about two years after I became an archivist, I realized a few things. And one of them was, is that as a, it's weird being a genealogist and an archivist um, it presents some interesting aspects I get to work with people of my own kind that walk through the door right, <laughs> and, I, right. and I understand them you know but I got to really paying attention to what they were researching in and the fact that there were some record sources that either they didn't know about or they were intimidated by and I thought you know I I really want to get this out there I want to teach others I, I love to teach and so the archive lady was born about three years after I became an archivist because I just wanted to just rip the curtain away from the archives and say look this is a wonderful place don't right. be intimidated don't be afraid you know and show them what all is wonderful that's there for them mm -hmm. and to help our and help genealogists or anyone to preserve their records their artifacts mm -hmm. and things like that because we all have them and we wanted them to be in good shape when the next generation gets them because I've seen a lot of stuff that has just been mm. destroyed because they weren't taken care of. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, but that's how I got started and I hope to be doing this and probably I'll probably be doing it until the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. And you do do such a great service. You know, your your um, statement that going to an ar archives and, and researching can sometimes be intimidating. Yes. You know, we're used to maybe... Sometimes a courthouse can be intimidating, but we're used to other kind of repositories, but it just does seem, oh, it's an archive and you know, I don't know what's in there and will they understand what I want and how do I do it and do I have to wear gloves or do I not have to wear gloves? I mean, you know, all those things. And so yeah. what you have done as, as the, there you go. Was <laughs> that her gloves? gloves? That was her gloves. I said my gloves. <laughs> yeah, it has really helped all of us and, and yeah. give us more, um, empowerment to be able to go and say, hey, I can, that's a great place. I need to not forget to go to the archives and ask questions and not just assume that everything is right there, especially in the smaller ones. You've talked about how there's boxes of stuff that just hasn't right. been, you know, and ask them, what else do you have? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Most... Go ahead, Shelly. I have a question. Yes. So you were a genealogist and then mm -hmm. you took three-year training. Mm-hmm. Did anything change from the genealogy research or genealogical research on what, how and what you were doing for your research that came out of that training? Ooh, fantastic Did, question. Does that make um, sense? <laughs> it, it makes perfect sense. Okay. And, and, I, and I will tell you, yes. You know, I mean, I, I just thought I was a pretty darn good researcher and I knew my stuff because I was doing it for clients too right. but let me tell you something you know I what I've learned and what I really try to tell people is that there is so much out there you know when you're working on an ancestor and you feel like you've hit that brick wall and you feel like you've mm -hmm. searched everything let me tell you something. There is so much more out there. And and one thing that really I have a tagline, it's not all online. Contact or visit an archive. And I say that everywhere and all the time. People probably get tired of me saying that. But it's so true. Our, there's about 5% maybe online. The rest are sitting in the repositories. It's the go and loco. Mm -hmm. It the is. Go -loco. It is. And I've, I learned that where you think records should be, Maybe they're not there. They're somewhere else. It's mm -hmm. taught me to take the blinders off. 
you know, and to really broaden my horizons, think outside the box. Mm -hmm. So my thinking for genealogy research, the process of researching my family has really changed since I became an archivist. And that's what I try to teach people. That's interesting because it, it's, it's enticing me to think further because I do so much of the methods and strategy type teaching just based on what you're saying. And it's like, wait, do I need to go check that out too to see how I can help teach differently? You know, I might not want to be in the archives, which I would love to, but to be able to teach some of that aspect, it it's probably worth looking at the curriculum to see how I could include that in, you know, take the training or whatever. I was at a historical society today and Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society. I saw the boxes, definitely. So <laughs> you know there's stuff there. Luvanna <laughs> County Courthouse has boxes. And you know what? Library of Virginia does not have the stuff that's in those boxes. Those are original things in those boxes. And, uh, you know, the library just doesn't have them. So, and I was sitting there, I said, okay, this, you know, it'll drive me crazy because I'm thinking, okay, we, we got to open those boxes and get in there. So, you know, it's almost like uh, another project, you know, mm -hmm. and I was actually there doing work, but I saw stacks, boxes, and it was like, maybe we need to get a little group together and take on a project. You know, I'm, there's several genealogy groups in the Charlottesville area and the surrounding counties. And I thought maybe we need to tap in there because you'll never get enough volunteers per se at the historical society that would come on regular. We could take on a project. And so I think this is inspiring how you're saying where you came as a genealogist. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm doing research in that county, I want to be in those boxes just exactly. in case the family that I'm researching exactly. is in there. And I'm sure they are. So anyway, well, thank you for that. that I got to look into that. <laughs> well, Melissa, too, um, I think sometimes a lot of the archives will have an online finding aid to show what they have in their archives. Yeah. And I think sometimes we forget we've got to approach those a little bit differently than we're used to like say going on to ancestry or family search and we tend to type in a name go oh, there's nothing about <laughs> that particular family <laughs> where we need to do more of topics um the area a church maybe name of a church or sometimes they don't have all the individuals in there but they may have it all recorded underneath a specific topic like that i had a um I was able to find a land plat map, the original um, from the early days of South Carolina just two weeks ago in the archives. in um, I was down in uh, Charleston, uh, down at the College of Charleston in their, in their archives. And the, the land plat map does not have the name of the people I was searching for, but it has the whereabouts of the plantation exactly where it was. Oh, it's not wow. there anymore. And right. so... I can present that to the family saying, okay, you know, it doesn't, it, I, this is where it was. At least now we know right. exactly where it was and it shows, mm -hmm. you know, the rivers it, it and, mm -hmm. and had I not searched for the name of the plantation or the area or whatever, mm -hmm. I would have never found that looking the name up. It didn't yeah. have the name of the plantation owner on it. And of course it didn't have any of the name of the enslaved whom I'm looking for. Right. But Playing around with those um, search engines helps a lot because they're yeah. they're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And and is that the way you work there and and your archives is a is the it's more of a, a broader search or do you try to get all the names in there too of the of the people <laughs> that are involved? I think that's actually one of the curses of being a genealogist and an archivist is that when I'm processing records, I'm seeing all the names and I'm instantly thinking there are people out there looking for looking these people. Yeah. And I'm thinking, OK, you know, how can I catalog this or index this so that mm -hmm. everyone is represented so that whoever is looking for these people will be, they find them because, mm -hmm. you know, yourself 
online finding aids, or even if you get a finding aid at the facility, many times it's that box by box, folder by folder listing, but it's kind of broad. It'll exactly. say correspondence 1928 yes. to 1935. Right. Exactly. You know? right. And so in my finding aids, which takes a little more time, and this is probably why a lot of the, especially the larger archives don't do this. I get pretty specific in my finding aids because Good I'm a genealogist and, yes. I, and I, and I think like a genealogist, Yes, you know, it takes more time to do yeah. that. You know, and I tend to do every name index for some of our documents. Oh, I can't I do it that. for every single yeah. one, yeah. but my goal is hopefully to do that. Um, as I process records and processing means, you know, they come into the archives just, you know, out of the attic, out of the barn, however they come, they have to be cleaned. They have to be flattened, taken all the metal out, you know, put in file folders, boxes. As I'm doing that, I'm reading these records and oh, I'm thinking gosh. there's genealogists looking for this. I know yes. they are. Or I'm looking at it thinking, wow, that's an interesting document. I hadn't thought about looking for those kinds of records for my own family. Right. Right. Instead of, you know, we have it in our head, a list. Okay. We look for this, we look for this, we look for this. And, and then we don't have all this other. Mm -hmm. A good example of that is recently um, we unearthed a document that was in a box of a bunch of stuff and it was dated 1919 and it was a petition from about 50 local business people and they had their signed their names and they listed what their profession was. But they were requesting from the Tennessee uh, Board of Pardons to parole a particular gentleman. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the, uh, so, and it got me, and this is what archivists do, and me especially as a genealogist, it was so intriguing, I started doing research on it <laughs> right there in the archives. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's uh, just part of the other duties as a sign. Right? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So this gentleman's name was Morris Dillard. And so I went to the court records to see, well, what did this gentleman do? He was in the state penitentiary. And so I found the court records. He had he had broken into a local business owned by J.B. Bunnell. And he had stolen five pieces of silver, a coat, a pair of trousers, a shirt, a pair of oh. shoes, a pair of socks, um, a tie, and a hat. And he was arrested and he was convicted and he was sentenced to three to ten years in the state penitentiary. Wow. Local, these local businessmen, these are the top-notch people in the community who signed mm -hmm. this petition mm -hmm. to have him paroled. The very first person who signed the petition was the gentleman he stole from. Wow. So was wow. there more to this story as in family and hungry and needed clothes for a job interview or something? <laughs> that has not been explained. I'm still researching oh. this case. But uh, this happened in 1916 when he was convicted and sent to this prison. Oh, he my. was paroled three weeks after they received the letter. He, um, he actually moved to Florida and became a professional fisherman. And he would come back to where we live once a year to visit people. He actually ended up, they found him floating in the <sighs> ocean and he died and he was brought back here to be buried. Oh my goodness. What a so story. It's a very intriguing story, but, and I'm looking at all of these names on this petition and I'm thinking, these are names. These are in someone's yeah. family tree. And it was in a box of miscellaneous. Yes. And it's not been microfilmed. It's not been digitized. It's not been anything. And I'm thinking, wow. you know, this may have someone's name on it. And it's the only reference mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. person on a document. Right. How, many, how many of us right. have ancestors? We can't find anything with their name on it. Right. And yes. so those that that's the kind of thing I want to share with people, the excitement mm -hmm. of using archived records, because I think a lot of us, it's we just do this. We get to the point where it's like, OK, I've done all I can do. I can't do any more. Right. I want to I want to inspire them and encourage them and say, yeah, there's still stuff out well, there. You're they doing a good job. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> 
I'm gonna look for the online class. Right? <laughs> well, you know, I you were off <laughs> you were also you were also talking about you know the the files that have the correspondence and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. The letter. Too. Well, you know, use that fan club because as I was there looking yeah. for stuff for the people I was looking for, I was looking at people that would have known them. And as I was looking through the correspondence, of course, they didn't write to anybody that I needed. But there were people in there, you know, when you read those early 1700s romance books and people leave me their calling cards and they want to, you know, they want to come yeah. visit. But just, there were calling cards from people signed oh by God. their friends in there. And so some, that person's family may be trying to prove that they were in Charleston at that certain time. Mm -hmm. All they need to do is research the fan club and realize that they knew these people and go look right. in their files and see if you can find anything. There were notes. Will you go walk, you know, on the battery with me, blah, 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 on this day, you know, just oh. all sorts of really cool things in there. And I'm like, why is it my people? <laughs> in here? But that's okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, think outside the box and, and do that fan club and go research and see if you can find manuscripts or letters or any kind of documents that belong to those people. Yeah. And your people may be included. So, you know, think think outside of your surnames. Yes. And, you know, a perfect, perfect example that I this type of record source I love to begin with, but I also love to process in the archives are scrapbooks. Oh, yeah. And oh, if, that's know, interesting. And when I would look for things for my ancestors or for my clients, I would look for scrapbooks. That is something that was always on my list, scrapbooks, diaries, things like that. But if I didn't find a scrapbook that was done by my ancestor or my client's ancestor, I would discount it. But you know what? If you look at these scrapbooks that were done in the area where these people lived, you may just find your find your ancestor in those scrapbooks. We recently just got a collection of records for a young lady who died in nineteen in the nineteen forties. She died a few months after she graduated high school. So that tells you how young she is. But she had saved so much, and then her family saved it all after she died, and we got it at the archives. She had a scrapbook. In this scrapbook. It's amazing. She saved every, you know, those little Valentines we used to give at school. Yeah, she sure. saved every one of those that she Aww. got from classmates and put it in her scrapbook. Oh. I thought, how cool. And that has nothing to do with her or her family, but that would be, I could find something like that for my ancestor in a scrapbook. Exactly. exactly. You know, it, just it, to me, I mean, maybe it's because I work in it. To me, it's never ending. Why would anyone ever say I'm done with my genealogy or I can't do anymore or forget that? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I will never, ever say that because no, I mean, I've seen of, what I've seen. Right. Think right. of the people that could, um, you know, do a search Benefit. for that high school. And then yes. if that, scrap, that scrapbook is tagged with Names. that high school or that community, yes. they start yes. looking through yes. it. And their yeah. ancestor may have sent one of those cards or a letter or be in a picture or whatever mm -hmm. it might be in her mm -hmm. scrapbook. So mm -hmm. that's that amazing. Me still thinking about that. <laughs> well, you know, my mother, her, her brother has passed. He passed in uh, 2006 or eight. I might get him um, confused with another one, uh, but he passed. And he, my mother's born in 1930. He's born in 1935, I think. And whenever he was in, I think it was third grade, he gave her a valentine. She has that little valentine mm -hmm. where he wrote his name on there. Aww, that's and, so and that would be a lot, probably maybe 1940 or or a little bit before then speaking of valentine's card <laughs> you could you can identify a community of the families if the last names are on there and you think back then you knew all the kids that went to a school it's in the true. 1930s and 40s everybody in the community is there and you're it's documenting a community I love it. I think yes, it's a absolutely. great exercise right. to be able to document the community. And again, that does bring in the fan club again mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well, because yes. how do you research in a community, especially a small one, unless you research the whole community? It's, so it's hard just to go in and get yours. They're all connected. They're somewhat. all connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep.
the archivist today at the historical society said you're doing what family <laughs> and she came back about 20 minutes she said that's gonna be a mess <laughs> and i said what <laughs> and she you don't want to hear the archivist the front. That. she said she said <laughs> there is so many families in this small area and they all connect they all had plantations they all were related mm -hmm. now we're finding all the slaves are related and i'm talking about 10 families with 30 40 slaves on each of them and i'm thinking i'm seeing naming patterns from the black and the white and it's like Oh, well, which one do I have? <laughs> you know, so I have to build a case to make sure I got the right household. Mm -hmm. And I found um, six heads of household, all with the same surname. I don't know. This is the white family, the slave owners. I don't know if they're all brothers or if one is a father and the rest are sons. So... I have to research all six of them sure. in order to get down to where I'm at. And I'm thinking, you're right. It's going to be a mess because there were so many <laughs> with the same name, white and black. And it was like, are you kidding me? She comes over. She made copies out of a book. She said, I pulled all the Lewises in Albemarle County. Here's eight pages. Oh, they all wow. have... Albemarle County Lewis is on there. Good luck. <laughs> well, maybe you need to start digging into those bo boxes in the archives. Oh, and maybe, yeah. maybe I think I need to help you figure I out. I have who's no there. problem sitting and taking a box, that, you know, and, and just taking a day and spit. Just give me water, you know, and, and fruit or water. something. And I'll knock out a box for you, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right. I've got something for you, Melissa. Okay. I, want, I want some advice. So this <gasps> doll oh. and it, and it crawled back when, but I've, I've not taken it apart. To, I don't even want it. I'm scared. It crawls? It, it was one of the first crawling dolls. And my grandmother received it in the late uh, 1920s to early 1930s. Her father worked for a department store in downtown Sumter, South Carolina. Uh -huh. And she was the baby <laughs> and oh. he brought this doll home for her and it crawled back in the day. <laughs> How did it crawl? I don't know. I don't know. I would have to take the whole thing apart. And I'm Is afraid there to something? do it. There's <laughs> something, there's something back in here. I can feel it. I'm afraid to take the, you know, <laughs> yeah, afraid don't to, do it because I'm afraid it would just rip. Um, I've got it right now. I mean, all the hair. I don't know. I guess it had hair. Maybe I don't know if it really had hair. If it's just this might have had a hat. It might, might have had a hat at one point. Mm. She kept it in a trunk for many, many years, and always said, you know, that I could have it. And then one day she just said, "You know that doll? You want it? Yeah, yeah." <laughs> so, so it's in a glass case, and I, I, I want to be able to just keep it on display. Is that okay? It's it doesn't get any direct light. It's okay to put it on display as long as, like you said, there's no direct light. The only thing that I would encourage you to do is you are going to have to kind of get in there and make sure that there are still no batteries in there because oh. the acid in the batteries yeah. can can they have had, I didn't even think about batteries in 1929, but I guess it could but have you need to check. Oh, That's you're right. Good. Yeah, you do because it's got it. it okay. It, if it crawled, it had a motor of some kind. You're right. And I don't yeah. feel anything that would wind. So you're probably absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So I would look, I would mainly do that because I'm the batteries, sure. if they haven't already, they're going to corrode. But yes, you can yeah. keep it on display. Okay. Like I said, and, but keep it in an environment where I would say cool, mm -hmm. dry yeah. and mm -hmm. dark. Now, not like in a basement dark, right? But dark, not, not any light directly yeah. on yeah. it. No direct now, lights on it at yeah. all. Now, yeah. um, and I would suggest that, uh, you know, two or three times a year, I would actually, you know, take it out of its case and make sure that everything's okay with it. And you can still keep it on display. Um, but if you ever want to, to store it, you know, I always say in the archives world, less is always more. 
the less mm -hmm. you do to something is mm -hmm. always the best. And in that case, something like that, you would want to just get some archival tissue paper okay. and gently wrap it, not tightly, but gently wrap it and then put it in an archival box. Okay. Now make sure when you're putting anything in an archival box that it doesn't move around in the box because it could get damaged. Yes. So crumple right. up newspaper or crumple up uh, arch archival tissue paper and put around okay. it. But like I said, that's all you need. It, you yeah. know, um, a lot of these archival stores online, they're great to get online and look through what they have. But I always, always encourage people to write or request their paper catalog and have it sent to you in the mail. It's kind of like getting the Sears and Roebuck Christmas catalog ah. wish book, you know. <laughs> And it's easier for me to sit down and look through there mm -hmm. to find things. And let me tell you something. There's a box for everything. And so, <laughs> you know, I love and, it. And, and some of these places, especially Gaylord, I know Gaylord does it. I don't know about the rest of them. That you can actually order specially sized boxes. Oh, okay. Specifically right. for your okay. item. That's, that's good. We'll have to, we'll ask Terry to put that link. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting when you when you brought out the Dow, I actually have the last Dow my grandmother gave me. Mm -hmm. All of us girls, granddaughters, we got our last Dow at age 10. Oh, now I'm so 66. Sweet. So that's how old, <laughs> you know how old that Dow is. My mother crocheted a uh, dress on to it and oh. it doesn't have hair like that one, you know, and, but she keeps it dressed up, but we have not, put it in anything so I th and we have it sitting in a rocking chair a little wicker rocking chair but I think I need to close it up <laughs> you, you know I need, yeah, I need yeah. to get that box and the tissue paper you know even though yeah. it's beautiful nothing's wrong with it well one leg my youngest brother hammer and the leg, he gets oh, the leg. No. So their tape is still on it from, you know, yeah, back. Those then. boys, those boys, my boys took their GI Joes and they would attack the Barbie dollhouse all the time. So I know. Yes, those boys. yes, yes, yes. I don't know why he did that, but I just thought about that. I need to preserve that, you know, and, yeah. you know, I might have a grandchild someday. So. And it's yeah. also important, just like we source our documents and our photographs. Oh, you yes. Can source your artifacts. Yes. You know, even in your glass case, Sherry, you need to put something in there, on there, or something explaining who it belonged to and the story. And just like, yes. you know, Shelly, you were talking about your brother taking the hammer to the <laughs> leg. Put that Tell in it. the story. Yeah. Because you know, that's part of the whole the story of that artifact. Yes. Yeah. So and and exactly. she's sweet and it's funny. I don't even know if I named her because my mother had kept it once I left that you know the house as you know I left about sixteen years old and I'm thinking did I ever name that Dow <laughs> you know and I don't know I'm actually going to ask her you've riled up the curiosity <laughs> on that now <laughs> you know and and she's actually in mom's room not my room so. <laughs> Okay. sitting on a pretty you know little wicker chair in a chair so great info that is great, great. i think that i think the oddest thing that i still have <laughs> from my childhood is the original easy bake oven and and that's not odd to have oh, but oh, what's really it. odd to have is i still have some of the little boxes of stuff that never got <laughs> the open mix. oh <laughs> i'm sure that that's just really just just in there but it's it might the be box grown that's grown in there just leave it alone <laughs> leave it alone don't touch it um, my kids are like what is that mom <laughs> well yeah. so oh, do you yeah. do y'all remember the doll uh uh called uh, baby alive where you could actually it would actually eat food mm -hmm. i ate some of that food and it was horrible it oh, tasted oh. like plastic it was awful <laughs> It was I not made for people. Yeah. It was not made for people. <laughs> I still have my Mrs. Beasley doll. Do you guys remember the Mrs. Oh, Beasley? Oh, I remember Mrs. Beasley. Yeah. Her glasses are gone in her little apron, but I've got the rest of her. And my kids are <laughs> like, Mom, <laughs> no. <laughs> thing is scary. And I've got a Mr. Magoo doll. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a stuffed, little stuffed yeah. doll. So, you know, his little hand it. came off a long time ago. And, you know, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> it's all in my oh case my of God. things. And they're like, Mom, why, really? You know, so. <laughs> well, but there's good memories there. Yes. yes. And 
like the anticipation of opening those boxes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and things like that. There's probably boxes that we have that we haven't looked at. And now that we've been on this genealogy road trip, mm -hmm. it's time to go back because I've got several boxes. I was doing research back when I lived in Hawaii in the 80s. And I bet there's stuff in those boxes Probably. that now makes sense where they didn't make sense back then in the 80s. Yeah. And I yeah. thought, you know, I just now I have a little more time, you know, to to actually go through there. I might go look at one of those boxes. <laughs> I mean, there might be something original or something. You never I, know. I don't know. Right. My no, dad used to lose it. Yeah, my dad used to save things just saying it might be worth something one day. <laughs> so well, and, and I do have a wedding um how do I call it? I'm gonna say a wedding picture, but it's big and I think they were married in eighteen seventy five and it had the uh two photos, ten photos mm -hmm. on this certificates but i think it was wow. 1875 but the air is eating it and it's at like 11 by 17 mm -hmm. or bigger and yeah. i'm thinking and it's and it's a relative of the family you know the the wife is a distant relative of ours and i haven't found any hearts h-a-r-t-s until just a couple of weeks ago and i thought i need to pass this off mm -hmm. to the family first i need to make sure it's the same heart which i'm sure it is the same town same county and you know because i can preserve it but not for me exactly and, and i'm thinking yeah. that's not yeah. something i want to keep and i've had it now but i know the air is getting to it yeah. you know yeah. and i need to hand it off to someone that's going to keep it. It'd be great in a museum or something, yeah. though, just mm -hmm. as a sample of. I mean, the thing is huge. You know, it's probably a 16 by 24. Goodness it's gracious. It's huge. Wow. Yeah. That's and big for 1875. Little, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's 1875. And the two 10 pictures, they're no bigger than that. Wow. And then it's all this glorious writing. Yeah. You know? yeah. So well, if it's not I the right family, right perhaps you can get a hold of a, the historical society or something like that and donate it. Yeah. See if they would preserve it or their archives or, or whatever, whoever would be willing to take it in that county. And then they would take care of yeah. it. That would and be then the family in, coming along would find it in the catalog. <laughs> I, yeah. Yes. Yes. There's hardly, yes. there's not that many there that, line is kind of fizzing out there's yeah. just a few there but i think it'd be a great opportunity so maybe i'll look at donating that you know because it and again it would be nice sitting in the museum to be able to look at a old style marriage record yes. you know yeah. type thing yeah, it would so, so melissa do you i'm Jefferson sorry do you, i was just gonna say do you get people calling and saying i want to donate these things because i don't know what to do with them do you get a lot of that Oh, great question. Um, I actually do, and I'm very proactive about uh, communicating with my community here and with mm -hmm. the people who used to live here or have families here. I have a thing that I do on Facebook called Today in the Archives. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I post a scan of a document, a photograph, something that's in the archives, and I explain what it is. And I say, if you, we are actively looking for records, documents, if you have something to donate, please get in contact with us. And that has happened a lot for people that will come by the awesome. archives and they'll say, I have this, do you want it? You know, I don't want it. I'm going to throw it away. Do you want it? And I always can't say no, but I uh, want <laughs> I can't say no. It's just, it's horrible. But um, I have a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Ken Feith. He's the archivist for the uh, Metro Nashville, Tennessee archives. And he says, you know, it's okay to be an archivist and a hoarder at the same time. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but the one that really touched my heart happened about a year ago. Um, these two girls walked in the, uh, probably in their forties, my age. And, they had a couple of boxes with them and they, they said, you know, said we have this and we're actually on our way to throw it away. But if you want it, we'll leave it with you. And what it was is their mother was in the nursing home as they were standing there. And with the two boxes were filled with 
were three ring binders of her life's genealogy research. <gasps> oh my oh goodness. My gosh. And, oh, and of wow. course I was going to say yes, but when I looked at it, I thought none of these families are from my area. These are all from like Pennsylvania and up north, but they contained original records. They contained photographs. It was her life's over 50 years, life's work and her genealogy research. I could not say no because they were taking them from my office to the dump to throw them away. Uh, and so I still have them. I'm still doing some research and trying to find places to place them. Well, but, maybe somebody, maybe somebody listening to this will go, oh my goodness, I know exactly where you can. Yeah. What I can I get a hold of you? What county? It, I, 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 don't, more, you don't I don't know? remember off the top of my head, okay. but um, it's got, there's several different surnames and I was, I just couldn't say no, but that is also a lesson for all of us as genealogists. Sure. Sometimes things that are out there are not really where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. right. um, you know, a lot of people donate their things to their alma mater, their college, where maybe they don't live. Yeah. They just went to college there. Right. Or maybe they lived in a certain area and then they retire to Florida, but all their stuff gets donated to someplace in Florida. You know, I know it's difficult. You know, well, how in the world am I supposed to find that? Well, you just keep looking, you know, maybe it'll get cataloged and put or on asking online. questions. Yeah. Exactly. Or asking, yes, exactly. And, and as and you so. said, maybe it'll get cataloged and put online. So doing a search with some places like, you know, how, how do you trust mm -hmm. or archives grid or, you know, places like yeah. that, you'll be able to find them through there. Yes. Well, if it's, yeah. if it's Franklin County <laughs> or Cumberland, Cumberland or Janida, Call or or the other one starts with the M and it's right next to it, and um, that's Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, is in Franklin okay. County. So it's a yeah. very <laughs> heavy Civil War area too. Mm -hmm. And so let me know. I'll let you that know. historical society would probably love it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now see, this is what Jen Friends is all about, right? That's, yeah. right. That's right. Learning Today. from each other and helping from each other. And we are so past our time. I know. <laughs> this, I know. This, this was so much fun. We could go on for hours. But ain't nobody want to listen to that. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to keep this short so that people enjoy yes. it and, and want to listen and leave their comments. So, Melissa, thank you so much for, for everything that you've told us tonight about archives and your history and how you got involved. And, 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 and would we all be able to just fall into something like that? We would all love it. So we awesome. are grateful for everything that yeah. you do to help us to be able to preserve our documents and our dolls and, and everything else that we have, that we have from our ancestors and from our own lives, from our children's lives. And Shelly, thank you so much for your help tonight and your comments and, and being here. We sure appreciated you being here tonight. Thank so you. thanks everybody. This has been Jen Friends and um, we're grateful that you were able to join us and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye.